Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Vangelis, and uh, did you know that I filmed a whole little bit about how I installed the batteries on Feral Rex's head and then lost the footage? I still have the audio, but that's not really any good to any of us, is it? Uh, that's embarrassing. I don't lose footage anymore. No, son, what's embarrassing is thinking for the last, like, month plus that you'd already edited and posted this thing, and then discovering in July that you still hadn't that... My friend is embarrassing. Anyway, let's get back to the show. So I thought that I'd just mix all this together into a little bit of a casual style Feral Rex check-in as we're halfway through the release of these guys and just see how this dude works. So if you do want to install the batteries, there are certainly videos out there now that can show you how to do it, but you basically just have to pull out that screw and that screw, then this panel just lifts out, there's a socket back there, you stick the batteries in, then you close it and screw it back together. It's super simple, it is not Quake Wave whatsoever. And my favorite thing about this is that, unlike Quake Wave as well, this thing has an actual button, like a nice clicky button that clicks in and out, you get lit up eyes and you click it off, you get unlit eyes. I don't know. Uh, not that I dislike QuakeWave's electronics, but they definitely are a lot more of what I would call uh, a homebrew solution, whereas this has, has a bit more polish on it. Also, just this dude's head is... it's pretty, man. While we're up here, a couple things I've noticed about Feral Rex. Number one, I really like the way that he looks, even when he has no arms. Like, you can just see the, the beefy torso uh, shape going on here. It kind of reminds me of when I was building the LEGO Metal Beard set. You get that very Dreadnought-like know, pectoral upper shoulders block on top of an abdominal mini block. I don't know. He, he looks he looks like muscle made of metal. I dig it. Uh, another thing I noticed is that he's got these back guns, right? And they don't really click in anywhere once you start getting them out in angular. Like, there's a little nub thing here, and you can you know, push it up against that ridge for one pseudo-locking point, or put it on the other end for a different pseudo-locking point, or put them up here, and... Like, it'll rest in there pretty pretty tightly, but nothing clicks. Uh, so that's one little thing that, uh, you know, might mess with you. thing that messed with me is these things for Feral Rex mode can extend, right? So I extend them both. This one feels real good, real tough, real solid extender. This one doesn't. This one tends to sink when gravity takes hold of it. I'm, like, taking this guy waving around. Oh, there it goes. It's already now. So, I got something loose inside the railing in there. Um, in general, I just found these guns have been a source of a lot of uh, somewhat uncharacteristic tolerance issues, and I'm really sure that stems from the vac metalization, because that adds, that adds micrometers, and I think that screwed with a lot of stuff despite all the revisions this guy had. I don't know if, uh, if the vac metal was worth it, but it's there. Uh, Leo Ducks is out, so it's not really going anywhere. If there's ever an option, because these are removable to, you know, have, like, non-vac metal ones that are maybe fixed or, or messed with a bit more, I would be into that. Uh, maybe only my Leo Ducks has the slidey cannon syndrome, but it's definitely a thing. Um, down below, let's get to the legs. This is where stuff has actually been happening. I'll just move back for a second also to show you that this guy does not fit into any kind of easy shot. Like, this is me leaning all the way back, and... I don't know what I'm going to do when I actually want to talk about Feral Rex. <laughs> like, I might have to get partly in shot, and that's no good because, well, I don't look like a human when I'm at home. But uh, his legs connect pretty solidly. They use uh, actually the same connection port as you see up here. And it's just kind of a, uh, it's, it's very frictiony actually, but you just push and twist and it kind of locks in and uh, it's, it's super tight, super solid. And to, to disconnect it, you kind of pull and twist. So it's very twist-oriented. So it's actually a really beautiful tolerance. I'm super digging it. Like, this feels like the result of a lot of the delays these guys went through, is this near-perfect combiner tolerance that doesn't need any kind of spring-loaded, well, at least spring-loaded on our end nonsense. I think there's a little spring-loaded switch in here, but feels really good. Anyway, these legs, man. Uh, the first thing I could say is uh, you can, you know, disengage the skirt and whatnot. Uh, you know that weird joint on Leo Ducks. You can see it here now. That that weird below the below the, the thigh swivel above the the knee kind of joint. Um, that is intended to be a forward hip motion for Feral Rex. You see, by using that joint rather than just Leo Ducks's hips. See, there we immediately hit the skirt. We've got, you know, classic SRC 
uh, Bandai-ish looking uh, part of the skirt moves forward stuff going on. Not bad stuff, necessarily, but if we use that smaller joint first, you can get still a, a, an amount of forward leg motion without having to break up a lot of the skirt shape right away. And it also implies a bit more height, like it makes it look like um, there's just less leg. It kind of implies a, a weird sort of taller stature than if, uh, you see, we've got this one moving forward, than if we move the whole leg forward. It somehow makes him look like his torso is a little bit smaller. So, it's there as an option, it's there as a, a bit of a visual trick. There are also like a couple stages of extension on these legs. Like here's the full Leo Ducks extension. This is also the I want mine as big as Hercules mode for uh, Feral Rex. Then there's like this mid detent. Yeah, come on. Yeah, here we go. And this is kind of like the, the primary Feral Rex height. This is the, the one I find most aesthetically pleasing as well. And then you can also pull them all the way in if you want to, to make them look stubby. But I, I don't understand why you'd want to do that. One other weird thing, speaking of locking parts, there's these, uh... Or there are these little flaps on the sides which sort of complete the look of the skirt and the belt and everything on, on Feral Rex. And they don't actually clip together here, they, they uh, just have to be positioned in a way where they, they do line up really well. But here's another point where I almost feel like, I think it's, it's, it's loose so that you can get, you know, this outward uh, hip motion quite easily. But I wouldn't have minded some little nubs to kind of soft clip that in just so it, would, it wouldn't be, uh, you know, disturbed by finger bumps. Uh, let's get a little bit lower, and by that I mean let's lower the damn camera down to where he's got weird looking kneecaps, which sometimes, sometimes if you bend them the right way, you can see little faces inside, and that's just creepy. But his knees are uh, double jointed, and this it's tricky stuff, man. Number one, I'll just say right now, I, I tend to put the lion paws like this, because then they're completely out of the way of all this stuff. And when you're bending the knees, there are two points that bend. Like, here's the point that's inside Fortis and Bovis, and here's the point that's in Leo Ducks. And if you use a combination of those, you can get a pretty good knee bend uh, before you have to start, you know, doing science and figuring out where to put things. But, yeah, it's not too bad. But, over here with uh, Bovis, I find that because this joint inside Bovis is so tight, it's, uh, oh, wait, I bumped, here, check this out. I bumped the plate off of its peg. I fixed it. Anyway, down here, Bovis. This thing is so tight that whenever I try to bend this leg, it usually is Leo Ducks first, and I have to make a pretty pointed effort to get the Bovis joint to start going. This is only a thing with Bovis for me. Um, he, it's just a very tight ratchet in there, and maybe that'll uh, ease up with time. Going down to them feets. There's, you know, there's ankle tilts and all that stuff. It's actually a, a large ball socket connection. And mine is standing super happy, super fine. I can shake them and stuff and everything's cool. Uh, that's because when you make the feet, this is very important and it's pretty easy to miss. The connection clip thing down here, uh, you should fold it down like that. Uh, I think a lot of folks are going to end up putting this guy together with that thing like that or, you know, in there like that. Oddly enough, this thing is a primary piece of heel support. Like, there are heel support bits back here, but this little black nub does a whole lot of that work. And, uh, like, I'm putting him down. He's standing totally solid. Let's flip these things in. See what happens when they are not there. Let's zoom out for maximum effect. He starts leaning, like, I don't know if I can, if you can see what's going on here. He's leaning the hell back. Let's get him like this. Like, check this out. Yeah, that ain't right. So let's get those things back into their downward position. Now he stands straight and tall. So those are a couple things uh, that one can do with a Feral Rex once you've bought, like, you know, all the ones that are out as of this recording. We don't have any, either of the arms yet, I guess any of the three arms. But man, this guy is still pretty friggin' imposing for an armless robot. I'm really <laughs> surprised. I was joking about armless Feral Rex pictures back when I did the uh, Fortis video. And then I put this guy together and I was like, Gat damn, this guy, <laughs> this guy has, you know, some imposing stature to him. Like, oh, let's get all the way back here. Look at that. He still looks like he's gonna kick your ass. He'll just headbutt you a whole lot. Uh, also, you can move the lion mouth to... Yeah, that's... 
And uh, I guess just to, to end this little section, let's uh, hang on. Let's get the camera up here. Let's do this. I don't want to do it too hard because there are electronics in this guy's head, but they are all contained inside the noggin, so hopefully nothing will go wrong. But there's two tests I'd like to do. Number one, the Hercules shake test. Shake him by the leg, nothing happens. Shake him by the midsection, nothing happens. Shake him by the upper part. Solid. And then if we give him a little toss, he almost knocked the entire... Uh, hang on, I think that the hanger wall actually did come a little bit loose back there. Uh, yeah, so... Oh, here, okay. So, one of his legs compressed slightly. Oh no, it didn't compress. The other leg just extended all the way. No, wait. No, it did compress. It compressed. I was wrong. <clears throat> there we go. And then this thing came loose. The, there's, a, there's a bit of a weak connection on the back here. I think that's what's causing that to happen. Up front, it's... Uh, it's pretty solid. I actually really like how this, this wraparound pelvic skirt works. I think it's a cool way to handle the situation. There we go. We gave uh, gave armless Feral Rex a little toss. Well, let's say you want to just... You want to friggin' fan mode some arms on this guy. Let's give that a shot. Yeah, you see, this is, uh... This is fake. Um, I don't off the top of my head remember who came up with this, and I'm sure that it will appear before your eyes, but this is a way to use the leg guys as arms to see what Feral Rex looks like with an arm when you only have two guys. So basically, if we lean back here, you can see that it's Feral Rex with one arm and one leg. The way that the, uh, the arm works is basically a whole lot of bull honky and visual trickery, because... The connectors are all the same, so it's just using, you know, the, the same connection point as down here on the legs, but this guy's been kledged into a kind of fans project ETFC ish looking arm where the you know the legs are the elbows and stuff. And the hand is in there real we could take the, the Oppenheimer semi claymore, which is not all quite fixed up yet, and see it's pretty big. And we could just stick it right into his hand. This is pretty much rock solid. Nope. Because the uh, hand is literally just kind of wedged in and then sandwiched between the feet. And just kind of sits sits, sits there, except for when it doesn't. Um, so this this is just kind of like, this is fake-ass fake. Like, if you find the original photo, the Oppenheimer Claymore is like being held up by display stands. <laughs> but, I don't know, that's a cool idea. It gives you an idea of what this guy looks like when he's got, you know, unarmed. He's still pretty beefy. Still does not fit into an easy shot whatsoever. Anyway. So, uh, by the way, this is what I call the Skyhop Special. Uh, I don't know if he actually invented it, but I, for some reason, associate this weird f mutant thing uh, with T-16 Skyhop, uh, Mr. Nick over on Twitter. But, uh, yeah, uh, the Oppenheimer Claymore. I just want to take one more uh, moment to show this thing in and of itself. And it's friggin' long. It's about... It's about taller than Feral Rex. And uh, it's it's pretty solid. It's you know, you've probably seen footage of it already. This thing is is about, you know, the, whoop, it's about the proper size for a human being to wield as a small Bowie knife. Um, here it is next to another swordsman transformer. He's tiny next to it. He's about the size of its handle. And then there's the rest of all this. He's like, "Oh god. Uh, I guess he could try to swat Unicron with it." Spoiler alert. Anyway, the Oppenheimer Claymore. Uh, this thing is going to get a bit bigger, but this direction. Uh, if I recall correctly, the remaining weapons that attach onto here, you know, they jut out the side and kind of beef up here. But this is real, really the meat of it. And damn, if that ain't impressive, man. I like it. It's also solid. I think I can, uh, I can get away with... Yep, yeah, it's in one piece. It's fine. So, uh, yeah, Feral Rex check-in. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Uh, the main thing that I'm happy about is he doesn't seem to topple over very easily once you get those little black things put down on his feet. Uh, there seem to be a decent amount of options for doing stuff with his hips. I feel like the real test is going to be when Talon comes out, because the next guy who comes out adds not only an arm, but also a backpack, and potentially you can just slap him entirely on as a backpack too. 
So, uh, Talon's going to be a whole other round of, of stuff you can test with Feral Rex. I don't know if I'll do a check-in at that point. I might just wait. But for now, this is Internet Personality Evangelist. Thank you for checking out this little follow-up vidya. This little casual interstitial in the highly professional Feral Rex review series I have been producing for YouTube.com and Evangelist.ca. And I'll talk to you guys later on. I'm just going to end with a lovely shot of LED face. Have a good night, everyone. Because Feral Rex is watching you while you sleep.